Hey YouTube, Jake Kilroy here back in the shop. Thanks for stopping by. Um, a little project. I gotta put a post over here behind you and a post over here behind you to uh, run some support to the roof upstairs. And uh, we're gonna make some bases. These posts are wood. I've got some big timbers out back here that we're gonna use for posts. And I've got some sheets of 3 8 here that my steel provider sheared for me at 16 inches square and we are going to punch some holes in these um, using the mag drill to get ready to uh, weld our structure on here to take the post. The posts are 10 by 10s which actually means they're about 9 by 9s and so we're going to put uh, a box here, some gussets, and we're going to have eight holes to uh, secure these to the concrete. So these are the fasteners we're going to use to attach them. These are Hilti uh, concrete anchor bolts. This is a three quarter by seven. So we're going to drill a hole. The holes we're going to drill in here we're going to drill it one inch. So let's get the drill hoisted up here. God, that thing weighs a ton. So here's a drill. And cord off that way. Let me go ahead and spend a couple minutes to get the power in place and get um, this set up to go. And we'll so I've got my power run. I've got my plate sitting here. Uh, you'll notice it's sitting on another plate. Um, you've got to have a certain amount of mass of metal for the magnet to detect for it to kick the motor on. And uh, that amount is typically 3 8 which I have two layers of here. What I've done is I've hung this one layer slightly off the table so that the drill won't hit the table. And then the top's 11 gauge steel too, so we're ready to go. So I'm lined up with my first hole. Uh, before we get started, um, mag drilling, we've got an annual cutter mounted in here. Uh, let's discuss the most important thing to keep your mag drills alive, coolant. Uh, to keep your annual cutters alive, you need coolant. Um, I'm using uh, Cool Mist, same stuff that I use in my uh, mist uh, coolant systems. So it just it's convenient. Um, there's a little bottle here on the side that um, I mix this up in, just dilute it, and then I also have a keep a bottle of this stuff mixed up uh, in a spray spray jug for you know using uh, around the shop Now the coolant in here in this little jug will probably last all the holes that we're going to do in these two plates.
I call Magdal and making Brillo pads. Uh, so you want to get the best finish and the best life out of your uh, annual cutter, go with one steady push. Don't peck, right? Just do a steady push all the way down and keep the cutter engaged uh, for the length of the cut. And the finish is fantastic. Well, there we go. A little bit of quality time and uh, we have all of our holes drilled here. So some of you might be asking why I just didn't stack these two plates up like this and drill through both plates at the same time. I'll tell you why. They have specific annular cutters for drilling stacked plates. They're different, they have a different grind than regular annular cutters for drilling single pieces. If you try to drill stacked plates with a regular annular cutter, you can get away with it to an extent um, and then you can also fail spectacularly. Ask me how I know this because I've made that mistake. So if you're going to be drilling stack plates, you want to get a cutter that is made specifically for drilling stacked plates. This cutter that I have that I'm using here is not that. It's just a regular annular cutter. And um, uh, so it, it, I don't feel like blowing another one of these apart. So anyway, there we go. So now we take these and we... Um, well, actually, I need to go ahead and lay the center out on these again because I need to sketch out the perimeter where my uprights are going to go. They're going to surround my post. And So that right there is roughly, roughly, ooh, I'm off, I made a mistake, oh, I sure did, That is roughly the size of the post. So we're going to box this with some six inch flat bar. The post is gonna go down in here. They're, they're slightly different sizes. One of them's not quite square. One of them's pretty good. So I'm gonna have to, you know, custom both of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to notch these pieces are going to go like this right all the way across the plate i'm going to bevel these edges down like so like a gusset and we're going to notch these plates so that they nest on top of each other sit down here form this pocket that's outlined by these lines and then we're just going to weld the whole mess down to the plate so what I'm doing here, I've taken the dimensions of the post and laid these lines out on the exterior of the post dimension. The post is basically 9 and 13 16 square. At least the post I'm working with here. I got two of them. And I'm going to take these plates. I'm going to mark these here so that 
I know where my notch needs to go. So I'm going to make a quarter inch, I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole halfway down. Let's mark three inches. That's the top of my notch there. So I'm going to drill a hole, quarter inch hole here, quarter inch hole here or maybe slightly oversized and then I'm going to bandsaw out this notch and I'm going to do all four pieces so that they nest on top of each other so I'll have two pieces here two pieces here There's our base plate. our little piece of construction um, pretty much on the line it's a little big I have to take the slop out this way and that way but anyway we're looking good uh, 
The next thing I want to do is trim these pieces off here. I don't want that full height, so I'm going to go from maybe an inch out or so here and go straight down. I'll leave myself maybe a quarter of an inch down here. And then I'll cut this off here. Give it more of a finished appearance. We're gonna do that on the bandsaw, the horizontal bandsaw. So we got our four pieces here. I will come clean and tell you that I cut a I cut a couple of isosceles, you know, where it went like this. Oh, I cut one, then I kind of cut another, and I had to do repair. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm pretty happy with repair. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you see if you can tell them apart. See if you can identify which one was repaired. Was it this one? I think these two were repaired. Oh, that, I don't know, that looks pretty good. I don't know. Oh, cue the laugh track. Yeah. I cut this one like so. And um, what I did is I just took a drop and uh, Welded it on and ground it. Grinder and paint. Makes me the welder I am. So let's go ahead and fit this up on the base plate. Now there's going to be an extensive fitting up before the tacking starts. All right, so this is about fit up here. We've got four uh, magnets down here on the inside, and I've Measurements all the way around. A little skewed. This way. Okay. So we're going to get in here and start tacking these outside corners. To the bottom tack we're going to tack to the bottom or on these outside corners i'm going to try not to do any welding on the inside so i don't have to bevel the wooden post that goes in here so the post just goes down straight in i don't want to have to mess with it any so i'd rather be a little bit big than real tight All right so right there i'm about a sixteenth oversize which 
on that dimension, on this dimension, a little bit less than a sixteenth. So that isn't a whole lot of um, play. So what we're going to do is we're going to tack this all up, get it tacked in place. We're going to put it on the dolly, take it outside, and we're going to slap it on the bottom of the post and make sure that it fits. So this is my welder. Uh, it's an HTP MIG 2400. It's available from USAWeld.com. I'm not affiliated. I paid full retail for this many years ago. And um, surprisingly, this weld is still available and it's actually available for less money than I paid for it, you know, 10, 12 years ago. And it's a transformer style machine. So it doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles that um, a lot of people look for now in the IGBT style machines, no pulse, stuff like that, but it works great. Uh, punches well above its weight. It's supposed to be a 240 amp machine. It's not really all that hard to get well past 240 amps with this machine. So this is what we're going to be using. I've cleaned it up a little bit, knocked dust off that kind of thing to make it look presentable. And, uh, we're gonna put this uh, put this new wire in here, and we're gonna test it out. So it's a nice machine. I've, I've like I said, I've had a lot of use out of it, and I could highly recommend to anyone that they um, that they get them get one of these machines. So. Like I said, this is a, a E71 T-1. Um, this is a HTP, HTP product. I bought it from them. And um, it said made in USA, right there. Made in the USA was on the package. So there you go. Well, miracles never cease. This is an 035 wire. These are 035 rollers. Honestly, here's the original rollers for other sizes I've never used anything on this machine except 035 wire so uh, there we go uh, the machine will take up to a 30 pound roll I don't like to buy the 30 pound rolls because uh, it just takes me too long to use them and uh, lots of times they will uh, corrode or whatever before I get a chance to use it all, so I end up having to take the roll in and out, store it, whatever. There we go. Okay. All right, so let's get the machine wheeled over to the table. Let's put this new wire to test. Alrighty, there we go. Uh, for the most part, wire brushed, DB bead. The uh, gas shield, the flux core wire from USA Weld. Uh, did really good. Uh, only problem I had was on one corner. Um, I got a whole lot of porosity right in there. I mean, a whole bunch. And uh, then I figured out it was because I was standing on the uh, cable and uh, restricting the gas flow. And it just looked terrible. So I had to take a grinder to that. Uh, the rest of it's certainly. Uh, workman like I guess you would say I'm not gonna win any beauty contest but 
Um, all in all, I won't be uh, upset about it. A little undercut in here. The base plate here is three eighths of an inch, and the side plate's a quarter of an inch. So when I was welding down on this base plate, you know, getting it getting into this angle here, you could really hammer along with it. Um, but when you came up the side, uh, it won't take quite as much heat, so you had to move along a little faster there. And then in a few spots, I didn't got a little bit undercut, but. major so now we're gonna continue to clean this up a little bit uh, get a little osfo on it and then put some paint to it okay there you go two post bases um, ready to be put to use one here's painted one's not um, I'll make a video of putting the post up because that's gonna be a big operation lots of people in here because those things are heavy really heavy. Uh, somebody's going to ask why there's no holes in here to secure to the post because I'm not going to secure to the post. The amount of load that's going to be on this post after I transfer all the load from the roof structure upstairs down to this is going to be such that if there's ever uplift enough to move this post, we better not be in this building, right? It's just not going to worry about it. The uh, fasteners will go through the base. We'll keep the base stationary once everything's plumb and in line. Keep it from kicking out. That's great, but I really don't need to worry about attaching it down here. If I have to, if it's a problem with inspection or whatever, I'll pop some holes here in the side and throw some uh, lags in here from the side to secure it, but I really don't think that's necessary. Uh, anyway, it's been a fun project. Uh, I got to spend some time with my son in the shop. Uh, got to do some welding, um, making some uh, progress on the building renovations. So all in all, very productive. Thank you very much for coming along. And please have a wonderful Merry Christmas, wonderful time with your family. Be safe in the age of COVID because I want you all back next year because all of y'all are important to me. So thank you very much. Uh, be safe in the shop and I'll be back with you soon. Thank you.